Okay, everyone, we are going to start up the uh, second week of this month's book. So, hello, hello. I'm trying out some new things with uh, the old camera technology tricks and whatnot. So this actually, this background, uh, it, it, it it's not relevant to the book at all, but it's new and I, I'm experimenting. And so I'm just going to throw this out into the into the internet ether of, uh, of things to do. So this is actually a picture of um, a ruins in, in Mexico. I, I did a cruise with my family last a, a year ago, August. So about 15 months ago or so, and, and had a great, a fantastic time. Got to do the cruise thing. That was my first cruise ever, actually. And uh, this is a picture that, uh, that of, of one of the ruins we went to and learned all kinds of great things about the history of the place and whatnot. So I won't get into it, but the, you know, just it's relevant. It's not some random picture. I actually took this picture. So it's not something I just grabbed off the internet, but uh, I, I thought it was, it was an interesting shot to, to somewhat, you know, just kind of show there are great things to do in the world. There's, there's things to learn about, um, not only the world, and I was just thinking about, well, how our life is a landscape and we design that landscape. We design who we become and, and all that. So this month's book is a lot about that, right? So we're kind of in the series of uh, encouraging with myself of the three E's. Uh, so if you happen to upon this one first for some reason, uh, I would recommend finding the first week at least of this book but uh but there's other there's others where i explain the e3 i'm going to do it again so e3 lc that's that's my company that's uh leadership training and coaching and e3 is is all about the the three e's that i use as an umbrella term for the things that i think are important to put our our finger on our thoughts into our efforts into about how to be better leaders how to be better people and how to make this world a better place so effective with people is the first thing that comes up because I, I bring that up mainly because it is we got we work with people and if we're not effective with people a lot of things are very difficult to do if not impossible at times and the second one is efficient with things right so when we're going about our life we want to make sure that we're getting things done we're getting things accomplished we're, we're going after our goals and whatnot like everyone talks about but you can always be more efficient right we can always figure out better ways to do things. And I certainly have always had in the back of my mind that there's always a better way. Even when I find what I think is an optimal system, I keep trying to tweak it. I keep trying to find out, can I, can I make it better? Can I, can I, keep, can I keep going? Uh, and as we are humans, sometimes that works, right? Sometimes you find something, wow, this, this worked better, awesome. And then you try, other times you try it and it works for a bit and you realize, wow, that, okay, but I'm missing this key component. I got to keep tweaking. So that's for another day. But it's just, you know, I'm always looking at it from how can I be more efficient with things, right? And when I don't want to confuse those two at all. You don't want to try to be efficient with people and effective with things in the same way. And I'm using those terms very, very specific. Um, being efficient with people can really cause strife between relation or in relationships between people. And that's, that's why I don't use that term with people. It's, it's about being effective, right. And, and honoring the relationship that's being effective again for another day. Now we're actually in a book, uh, the month series in the 30, which is encouraging with myself, which is actually the foundational principle. Right. I think the effective with people is the part that everybody sees, sort of like the iceberg analogy that everyone uses a lot in things. So the effective with people, that's what everybody sees. Are you effective with people? Are you good with people? Do you have good people skills? Do you work well with others, et cetera, et cetera? Right. Well, that has a foundation in encouraging with myself. If you are not encouraging yourself, human beings by and large, and there are exceptions, of course, but by and large, human beings are not wired to encourage themselves. If you listen to that voice, right? And there's discussions about, there's lots of great discussions about, well, who is speaking and who is listening when that voice is talking, right? And it happens to be you in both places. And again, another topic for another video, but it's an interesting thought about what that's all about. And so encouraging with myself is all about learning how how to 
do that? <laughs> to put it simply, how do you actually encourage yourself when that little voice is at times just blaring, oh, you screwed up again, or ah, what a mess you made, or wow, man, I don't know, why do you think you can do that, right? Those kinds of silly things that, that we, quote, say to ourselves. And we could, again, that's a topic for another video about whether that's a true statement, if we're talking to ourselves or not. And what the purpose of that is that's going to come that's going to come at a, a later date but it's worth investigating and uh, and uh one i've read a book recently about that subject and i even saw a clip of a video of uh, another person delving into this realm that that had an interesting thought about it so there there's resources out there to really investigate it really figure out what it what does that all mean so part of what all that means is delving into a book. Books are really, really good for clarifying uh, your thoughts or at least uh, expanding your thoughts, expanding your awareness of what's going on with you and what's true for you. Somebody named this book, which is How to Turbocharge You by Larry Dennis, he sat down and wrote out his thoughts on that idea, right? And so it's worth finding out what he had to say about it. And there's a lot of great books out there. And that's what this series is dedicated to, is delving into a book and finding out, finding the gems that are really useful. And not every book is going to speak to everybody. Not every chapter is going to have the perfect thing for everybody. But I think there's value in, dis in discussing it, in evaluating it, if you will. Not even evaluating, well, yeah, evaluating it and seeing how does that apply to me right now? Right. And, and in a different chapter, at a different time is going to mean more. Right now, it doesn't mean much to me that my circumstances, whatever, later in life, wow, I really need that. And if you had never read the book or discussed it or, or delved into it, you might miss it. And, and that point in time when you needed it, you might gloss over and you'll miss an opportunity. Or it won't be as full and rich of an experience as it could have been. After all, this life is to be played. You know, it's a game to be played. And it's not about winning or losing. And I'll throw that in the mix right now, too. Um, so, you know, we can talk about that again another day. That's a philosophy, right, of a of, uh, way to look at life that's very powerful. So, okay, a lot of little things I just threw in the mix. And I think it's this background that's got me thinking about the bigger picture. <laughs> See what I did there? So anyway, let's get back to the book here. So it's how to turbocharge you. And we're going to do chapters four, five, and six. So they, the, the chapters themselves are chapter four is gaining confidence, five is taking charge, and six is commitment. And there's a theme, even in those titles, I think it's interesting. I was just trying to put together the book in a month, right? So I took it's about a 200-page book. So I said, okay, around 50 pages. Where does that land with the chapters? Where does that land with, you know, his concepts? Whatever. And it seemed to land pretty well, actually. So this this week, it, it turned out to be these these three chapters were about 50 pages in the book. So, OK, perfect. Right. But even the titles. Right. So gaining confidence. Taking charge and commitment. There's a theme there. There's a there's a definite train of thought. So hats off to Larry for having a, a clear direction in his title in his uh in his uh, chapters right in the book so it's not oh here's a great idea oh here's another great idea oh here's another great right he has a direction here and i think it's well thought out so hats off to larry way to go larry so let, let's kind of walk through these so chapter four gaining confidence so his biggest thing in this chapter is larry starts with anyway is you, you it's a really good idea when you're trying to do something big in your life to check out what you're good at, right? <laughs> like, like, think about what you really accomplished, right? It's okay to reflect on, wow, this, this was a personal win, right? That, that was a financial win. That was a career win. That was a relationship win, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he actually says, hey, sit down, write them out, write out your successes. Go ahead. Nothing wrong with that. Even has a little grid, right? And you can 
when did it happen? What area was it in? Describe what happened, you know, describe it. And then is, is I think one of the key points that he's trying to make here is describe the feeling it was to have that success. And a success in one area isn't going to feel the same in other areas necessarily. And I think it's, it's key to, to, to identify that and reflect on what did it feel like to make that great financial decision? Was it just, you know, I was ecstatic or was it, it gave me a peace of mind, right? Those are two different things. Both are valid and they both could have happened, right? For, for, them. but what, what was the main one, right? So anyway, so to reflect on those is good. It, it kind of brings it to light. It bring, makes it more real. It's not just information like, oh, I did X, Y, Z and aren't I awesome, right? It's not just that. It's just did X and man, that helped me feel like I had, a lot more confidence. I, I felt proud of myself. I felt I had turned a corner, right? So now I'm, I'm not describing, I mean, I'm, I'm describing, but I'm not saying the feeling, but that, you know, like those feelings, right? So then, and the other one was, you know, when I did that, uh, I was, I was super happy. I was just so glad it all worked out. It was just, the event went off great and I had planned it all and it just went fantastic. And it was just as uh, just the sense of accomplishment and pride and in, in that I can I can make something great happen. All right. So that's to that's a totally different feeling, if you will. And then. OK, so there's that. So it, it take you know, take time to do that. Then another thing to do is. He gives out this list, this huge list of positive traits and qualities. Right. And he says. OK, here's some, you know, let, let's who are you like? What are you what are your what what's good about you? And a question I like to ask people and, and it wasn't one that I that really asked before, but I really do kind of like asking the question now. And that is. What sets you apart from others? Or what makes you you distinct from others? And it's not meant to be a. Mm, a trap or something like okay well if you don't tell me the right answer then i'm gonna know like no 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 i just want to know what you say to you about what makes you you and that gives me some insight into what's going on behind the scenes right what's going on in the head what's in the makeup of how we view ourselves because how we view ourselves is going to affect how we do things and who we're going to be and how what the results we're going to get so anyway, he has this big list and he says, you know, to look, take a look at these. Um, and, and they're the, you know, the usual suspects of just being uh, agreeable, uh, calm, bright, careful, competent. I'm just going to do some effective, energetic, high spirited, humorous, loving, outgoing, productive, refined, tenacious, unselfish, vigorous. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right, and it, it, I'm just picking and choosing just to give you a, a sampling of it. He says, "Okay, great. There's your list. Now, list yours. Right, those are ideas. Those are things that people say. Right, right. Now, list list the ones that that fit for you. And I would I would add in, do that, and then take your top five. Take your top five qualities that make you you." What are your values? What are the things that you want to make sure are strong? So that people, when they think of you, these things come to mind. Okay, checking. All right, so sorry, I have to do the we something happening with technology so i'm gonna be a little bit you know it's gonna sound every now sorry about that so anyway um as i was saying it's it's uh the what makes you you is important and having that clear in your brain is really a good idea okay so taking stock of that is the deal now what what he's trying to build there and he even says it at the end of the chapter is confidence that you are a great person. You have a lot of great qualities. You might, you may realize that, and you may not. Most people don't realize the extent of the great qualities they have. 
life has a way of sort of beating that idea um that idea really <coughs> excuse me it it's not <clears throat> life has a way of kind of like obscuring what the truth is about how great we are and i think we're born to be great i think we're born with greatness <laughs> reminds me of another book i just picked up uh it has nothing to do with that it's just he uses born in, in the title anyway um another day <laughs> there's lots of books for this whole series is great it's good this would go on forever um <laughs> so anyway it's all about building confidence that's his whole point in looking at your success is build your confidence look you, you're great be confident now are you going to make mistakes yeah are you going to blow it sometimes of course you will especially if you're trying something big you're going to blow it because you got pieces to deal with right things go crazy so um <laughs> oh boy i'm having a little fight with technology tonight i apologize it's telling me my microphone's weird so if you're not hearing me i guess i'll figure this out and i'll redo this video and you will never know that this happened but if i don't everything's fine and you'll see this all day. all right that's enough for chapter four right so look at your successes be confident in that you know what you're doing now chapter five taking charge so take charge um Part of it is, he, okay, so I'm just going to run through this fairly quickly. It's fairly obvious. So he runs the idea of being responsible. And, and I would add in, I don't think he made this point in this book, but I would add in like responsible is response able. You're able to respond in an appropriate manner. Now, he's not using that word that way, but I'm going to throw that in the mix because that's, that is powerful. That's a powerful way to look at that word that you, you are able to respond, and I'm going to add appropriately. You can respond appropriately to a situation. And depending on how, how you want to view your life and what you're doing, that could be, well, the way I look at it, I'll just give you my opinion. The way I, what I always am trying to do is find the opportunity in the situation, whatever the situation is. Very recently, I was having an interchange, texting back and forth with someone I didn't know very well. We we're doing a business transaction and they seemed short, right? Very curt, short, uptight. Uh, like I was bothering them, but, they, but I needed to communicate with them to get them what they needed, right? And they seemed very not happy about that. Okay. And at first I was taken aback by it. And then as I was finishing up the transaction, I realized that the opportunity for me was to be a gracious, loving person because something's going on for them. They're in a bad place. So, something's really got them uptight and I'm, I'm just another thing that's going on for them rather than, you know, things going well. So I just tried to make it as smooth as I could and thank them and wish them well and you know and it was it was a short interaction it wasn't a big deal but i could tell in the text because you can tell when people answer with one word and it's very much like no <laughs> it's very it's very easy to tell something's going on and i took it personally for a bit which is a habit i used to have which is interesting now i look at it when it stopped for a second i said oh, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute they're having a tough time right so i was able to respond with the opportunity of service. That's what I took out of it. And the, that's a change for me. And not in a big way. Like I've always been about service, but the emotional attachment I had to the way they were acting washed away because the opportunity was, hey, I can be at least a bright spot and I can try to be a bright spot and whatever's going on for them because it was obviously very difficult for them. Um, it was actually today, this morning. Anyway. <laughs> whatever uh the other thing is okay so then he talks about being responsible and then no excuses right so you're going to be responsible and then going back to the kind of the way he intended it which is taking responsibility like if i'm going to do something just jump in go for it right and then there's no excuses if you blow it you blow it if there's you say you're going to do it do it not just i'm going to do it nah, well maybe if nothing else comes up right no i'm going to handle it right and it's going to get done and then, which brings up, uh, depending on the situation, ask for help, right? So if you're, 
things are things are going crazy and they go off track, hey, you might need some help from somebody, right, to get it back on track. Uh, next one is be open to criticism, right? If you're gonna learn, if you're actually gonna learn to be better, it's okay as people to tell you, yeah, that didn't really work for me. Or, boy, you really kind of missed your mark on that one. Or I was very confused when you started talking about this. It seems like that wasn't very clear. Whatever, right? Whatever the criticism is, but be open to it, right? Why not? If you don't listen to criticism, you run the risk of, you know, kind of being in an echo chamber and not really delving into what could be a, a launch point of greatness. You might be holding yourself back. And if you need, you need an outside person saying, hold on a second, that's good. And I think you missed the mark on here or whatever. Then another point is recharge your batteries, right? You can't just be go, 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 give, give, give without replenishing who you are. It goes back to those values to some degree and, and outside the purview of the book again, but really to serve others, you also need to serve yourself. You also need to take time to make sure you're doing what you need to fill your cup so that it can overflow into others as opposed to just empty your cup and then fall into a heap under the floor at the end of the day. Because that's not serving you, which eventually you're not going to be able to serve others very well. And then, then what? Right? Then no one's getting served. You gave everything, and then that was it. You're done. Well, okay, mate. But I, I would say there's more to you than that. So make sure you take care of yourself. See, so about recharging your batteries. Then, next one is be calm. Right? So even when things go crazy, stay calm. You're going to be able to handle it, and it, it, it kind of. I've been talking about this all the way through here. When, you, when you're confident, right, and you are taking responsibility, not willing to give excuses, just stay calm. You know you're going to handle it. One of the things that I tell myself in my affirmations, which is uh, another point that he's going to talk about later, but in affirmations, one of the things I tell myself is that I trust my intuition. I trust my thoughts. I trust my my intelligence, if you will, to, to find the right answer. I'm just going to trust it. I know that I'm going to take on whatever the circumstances are, my instinct and my go-to is going to be what's the best for the situation. That's who I am. That's how I'm going to approach things. So there's no reason to get uptight because I'm going to do what's best all the time. And sometimes best doesn't look that great, <laughs> but, but it's, it's not necessarily uh, bad either, right? There's something to learn from all that. Okay, but I'm getting off track here. Uh, well, no, actually, no, I'm not because he talks about that. Turn disadvantage into advantage. So that's kind of what, what I was just saying. And then he makes a little section here, shoulda, coulda, woulda, right? Which a lot of people talk about. And then he does this big, I just want to throw this out. There's a big quote from Spock. I don't know if, I don't know where, where this came from. Um, like the Star Trek character, Spock, right? Um, oh no, he did, he does a, it's like a parody, right? He talks about how Spock might say something about shoulda, coulda, woulda. So you just say, you know, I should, is sort of an exercise of futility because you've done something to think about what should happen or could have happened. It's just, it's a waste of time because it didn't happen, right? In an upshot, right? So from a logical standpoint, Spock, could is irrelevant. Right? If you've taken an action, you took the action, now go forward from there. So going backwards to it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, so you know his big point is just put that all together. Right. So instead of I'm going to try or I hope so or maybe, it's I will. It's going to happen. You can count on me. Uh, that's it. It's, it's a done deal. Right? Those kinds of words or statements are very strong. And kind of propel you forward, right? If you're gonna, if you're honest about your words and you say it's gonna happen, go make it happen. And it may be difficult. You may falter. You may need some help. You may need to ask for um, some input on some things, right? You don't necessarily have to have all the answers when you say you're gonna. You just have to be responsible enough, right, to handle it. Get it done. It means some extra work. It means some extra work. It means changing. Right, your approach, or maybe admitting that you're wrong about something, fine, do that. Right, move forward. Don't don't just kind of wallow. 
Okay. Then chapter six, commitment. All right. So the big thing about this one is it, it's really all about goals, right? He, he's just talking about like, like if you're going to have a commitment to something, you better write it down. You better have an actual goal and not just say something and then let it go, right? If you're going to be serious about a commitment, write it down and be really, really um, exact about it. So he goes really far into that. I mean, the whole chapter is really about that. So he makes a point about writing it down. Um, then he talks about uh, goal planning outline. Uh, one little side note, he talks about having um, do goals, have goals, and be goals. So what are you going to do in the future? What are you going to be able to do or what are you going to be doing in the future that's going to show who you are, right? What are you going to have? Well, you know, new car, house, all you know, whatever, whatever, right? So what do you have? Uh, the do might be, I'm going to travel, I'm going to meet new people, I'm going to start a business, whatever, right? So that's a doing thing. Then the B goals are kind of like, um, I'm going to be open. I'll be always forthright, honest, sincere, authentic, transparent, right? Those kinds of things. Those are being goals, trying to live up to the ideals of who we're going to be in life. Okay. Um, he talks about going through different areas and saying, look, you got goals in, in career, finance, family, spiritual, physical, mental, personal relationships, and emotional, right? Which cover the gamut of those have, do, and be type ideas in different areas. So then he has some other things. Okay. He wrote down those. That's awesome. Write down some steps. Like, okay, I got this goal. What are maybe some few steps for each one? What are you going to do? And he says, okay, great. Um, when you're looking at a goal, he's really concerned about and should be, right? Is it, is it bigger than you? Is it just kind of like, uh, it's probably going to happen, but this is my goal. Well, that's not going to propel you forward. It's going to draw you into the future. That's just sort of wake up. It's going to happen. Okay. Ho hum, right? That's not going to make you excited about doing something new. So, you know, find out if it is. Uh, then he talks about priorities, right? Then you're prioritizing, prioritizing your goals right? from long-term, medium, and short-term. And he says, okay, well, if it's long-term, what are the long-term ones? What's one, two, and three? What's the medium, one through five, uh, short range, one through nine, he's got here. And then and he says, okay, now establish them. What are you going to be doing right now? What's, what is it? What is the deal? So what are you going to actually be working on and all that stuff? So uh, then he talks about being specific and measurable and a little smart goal idea, right? Which is pretty common. Everybody's kind of talked about that. And then you sit down and you say, look, here's my plans. Here's what I'm going to be doing. And it, the thing about that is it's not just I have one goal and then I'm going to do a bunch of stuff, right? You actually have a lot of mini goals going on. If you just think about those areas that he mentioned. There's a lot of mini goals, right, going on concurrently. So take some time, figure out what the priorities are with that. I think that gives you a lot of clarity on where you're going with this whole thing, and what's really going on. All right, so that is chapters four through six on how to turbocharge you by Larry Dennis. So thanks, Larry. Uh, we're gonna do another week of this. We got, now from here on, he actually goes through um, some strategies he's got 14 strategies so we'll do seven and seven next couple weeks right and they're shorter like they're kind of like mini chapters right but it's a strategies 14 strategies for goal achievement so now he's talking about like how do you actually keep moving do your thing all this whatever so he's kind of pinpointing parts of what he talked about before and they're bringing up new things that are going to help you so that's the rest of the book, rest of the month, so to speak. And so that is it for this week. Thanks a lot for checking things out. If you have any questions or comments, you can put it on the video or uh, email me at kfurman at e3lc.net or go to the website, e3lc.net. And uh, we'll hopefully get to meet in person and talk then. Take care.